So a YouTube uh, video came across my channel the other day by Mike KAMRD over on Ham Radio Tube. And he was showcasing a 80 meter through 10 meter and fed half wave um, that he got off eBay. And that looked really familiar. So if you have been around the channel for about four years or so, my first HF antenna was a Nelson antenna on eBay. And so when I saw that antenna, I was like, oh wow, like this is really cool. This antenna looks like the one that I had about four years ago, but maybe some things have been upgraded. I want to check it out. I'm also in a new place, so of course a new place equals new antenna. So I went over on the eBay listing and I was uh, glad to see that the antennas have mostly not really changed price in the past four years despite everything else in the world inflating. So that was my first HF antenna was a Nelson Antennas eBay antenna. It was outside for about a year and a half straight. I didn't really do any waterproofing to it. I didn't take care of it. I, I left it out in the ice storms. There were like two or three ice storms that it lasted in and uh, it kept on kicking until we moved and I looked at it and the poor thing was rusted because I'd left it outside and, and abandoned it for almost two years at that time. And um, I was like, you know what, it's an eBay antenna. So when I saw a good old faithful Nelson antennas pop back up, I said, you know what, that antenna lasted me outside for about a year and eight months um, and it was still working. It wasn't in the best shape, it was still working though. And I never had to duct tape it, I never had to put in any type of zip ties or, or any of that, it, it just kept on working. So what you're looking at is the 80 through 10 meter, 130 feet of wire in fed half wave by Nelson Antennas on eBay. I wanna go ahead and say that I'm not getting paid by uh, Nelson Antennas. I didn't get a free antenna. I bought this out of my own pocket, so I just wanna put that on, on the table. But I just wanna talk about the differences that I've seen over the, over the years here because there are some differences over the, the antenna that I, uh, I bought four years ago that I put up on my channel. It's, it was called uh, my first HF antenna. And uh, we have the addition of a um, stainless steel um, wire holder here to kind of keep things together. Mine never came apart, but maybe somebody else's did. Maybe that's why that was added. Uh, we also have one on the other side. Uh, I don't remember. Oh, here. Yeah, so we have the dog bone insulator. And we, this right here is also new. I'm, I assume on the end of the infed halfway, this is some type of RF choke though. Uh, just the way it's wound. It looks a lot like the ugly ballon that I created for my old one. This antenna itself will talk about uh, all the metal parts are stainless steel. Um, a very solid construction. I don't see anything moving around when I hit it. I don't see it breaking in half if it rolls off the table. So we have that. It comes with a very good description of what an infed half wave, uh, how, how the configurations can go, and some specific instructions for this antenna, and I appreciate the paper copy of that uh, that we don't get with a lot of antennas these days. It's 130 feet of wire, so you're gonna have to have some room to put something like this up. And it says in the instructions, it comes flat out and it's transparent that this is not uh, weatherproof. It's not waterproof. There will be water that gets inside. Um, in particular, it will get inside just from the heating up and the uh, cooling down of air inside creating moisture. KEA UJM recommends that you get this thing deployed and see what kind of angle it sits at and then draw a very small hole on the bottom. And that way uh, air pressure is used to kind of force the moisture that builds up inside out. I may or may not do that because I may put this up and just use it as a portable antenna. I'm not sure if I'm gonna leave it up all the time because this thing's pretty handy and it's pretty light. You can throw it in a backpack. So a lot of different deployment scenarios but I definitely want to get it up in time for the holidays because this is going to be my Santa Net antenna. So real quick, here's a good close look at it. Uh, if you guys want to see the inside, which as a newbie was especially cool because I was actually able to see the components on the inside. Um, it was really cool just being able to see really what an infed half wave is made out of and, and see that it's not really all that complex. But also if there's issues down the road, so if you think you have a short or something's not working right, you can actually look inside this antenna box and you can see if there's something that's disconnected or something doesn't look right or something's blown up. And that's really cool uh, to be able to troubleshoot with. So the transparent box, I, I love it. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this thing up so we can get on the air. All right, so it's time for an assessment. Uh, it's too dark for me to show you guys what the camera looks like right now, so I probably put the clip before this, but it's actually tomorrow. 
anyways, um, the antenna uh, feed line part is probably only about two feet off the ground. The highest part's probably about 40 feet off the ground, so not the perfect uh, d uh, deployment, but we're going to just throw out 5 watts on 20, 40, and 80 meters here at 7 p.m. Eastern Time from Kentucky, and we're just going to see where our signal goes. So I've got a nice empty section of the waterfall, and we're going to call CQ. Oh, we need to change here. We're going to call CQ three times on each band. If somebody replies, I'm still going to finish that up, but we'll call CQ three times at least, and then we'll check the propagation, and this is with 5 watts on my FT891 to see where our signal gets to. So we're going to go ahead and let that do it three times, and then we're just going to move down to 40 and then 80, and then we'll look at the results over on PSK Reporter to see where we're at. I think 5 watts is a good test. So we're going to go ahead and move on down to 40 meters, and I'm going to go ahead and tune the radio. 5 watts is a good number because it really shows how efficient the antenna is going to be. Now it looks like we are actually already got a reply from KE2AA. I don't know if we'll finish the contact or not, but we'll give it a shot. It's not moving my TX frequency. Oh, look at that. We've already finished up the contact. And uh, it's not really that time of night for 80 meters yet, so I didn't expect a whole lot. Um, that's good. Oh, we actually did get a reply. Look at that. Oh, I, I think we're, we're going to finish it. Looks like we're going to finish it, so that's cool. Two contacts already. That's not bad. So 20 meters. For three cycles, it looks like uh, someone in Spain heard us, computer in Spain, and we're pretty much hitting the West Coast, uh, East Coast, Texas, and a little bit of Mid-America, uh, lots of the Canada stations that were here, uh, so pretty good stuff for, for three, Michael, uh, three, three cycles there. Uh, let's check out 40 me oh. You know what? Let's make me smaller so you guys can see. Let's check out 40 meters and see what it did there. So, uh, no DX on 40 meters and not much of the West Coast, but it looks like we basically hit just about everybody here on this half of the states. 80 meters almost looks a lot like 40, um, considering the amount of stations. Looks like we got a California and most of the eastern half of the United States. All right, so you guys saw what the uh, Nelson Antenna 80 through 10 meter did on 5 watts. It got me a contact on 20 meters there, contact, or sorry, contact on 40, contact on 80 within the first couple of rounds of um, FT8. All right, so here comes the cons. So uh, before actually posting this video, I definitely wanted to use the antenna for a few days. I didn't want to just give it 100% thumbs up and good to go. And unfortunately, I found some issues. Now, I really hate to even bring this up because um, I'm very much for a small business. I'm very much for hands creating products and selling them for a pretty decent price over the internet and kind of making their own way. And I also like this antenna from uh, several years ago, but I ran into a snag that I want to go ahead and just make sure I talk about. And I just want to go ahead and put out there, uh, this is something I hadn't seen before in the reviews, like any of the reviews on eBay, I, I haven't seen this issue. It just happened to see, I see it with my antenna, so there could be a chance I have a defect. It could not be like a, a, a white thing, and so I want to make sure that I give Nelson Antennas also uh, the courtesy of being able to reply to this. So if there's an update to this video, uh, if he says anything, a message reaches out to me somehow, um, you can do that on my website if you go to contact, by the way then I want to make sure that there is a conversation about it. So if he replies to this, there'll be a follow-up video in the description. Everything was going fine until I got to 80 meters of this antenna. And I'm primarily a digital operator. And so one of the reasons I bought this antenna was uh, on the eBay listing, it says that 75 watts is good for this antenna on a 50-50 duty cycle. And you're going to see here in a moment, uh, after a few days of using this antenna, 40 meters is great, 20 meters is great, but 80 meters I saw a problem. And I saw that after driving my transceiver at about 70 watts FT8 for quite a while. I, I was doing quite a bit of FT8 operating at night. And I noticed that my transmitter uh, stopped transmitting and my antenna tuner started, started tuning. And I looked over and it said high SWR. And I watched it for a moment and I saw the SWR slightly increase slowly as it was transmitting over that 15 seconds until it was 
basically not working anymore. And I thought, oh crap, this isn't good. So I, I ran outside to go see maybe what was going on. And unfortunately, I saw some damage to the antenna. Uh, and I think um, this might have been caused, this part, by the fact that it was outside in the cold. And I was heating it up via 80 meters. Maybe it just got the temperature changed too quickly and some of the parts cracked. But uh, on top of that, I let it cool down. And I tried to see, okay, maybe it just can't tolerate this much power going through it. So I tested it. I went down to 50 watts and uh, I didn't see any problems. 60 watts, I saw it creep up a little bit. And then by the time I got to 70 watts, I would only be able to do about four or five minutes of FT8 before the SWR was off the charts and it was unusable. And so uh, I just wanted to validate and make sure that I went outside. I checked all the components. So electrically, everything's connected fine. Um, everything's built together right. Um, so I came back inside today for the video and I shot um, an example on my FT891. I didn't want to damage the antenna uh, any, so what I did was just film myself transmitting at 50 watts, everything being fine on 80 meters, and then um, going up to 70 watts and the antenna being at rated at 75. Usually there's a good grace period of, you know, 10, I would think 10 watt grace period would be fine. So if you say your antenna is rated at 75 watts, realistically, it should probably be able to take 80 or 85. But in this case, the 70, it couldn't take after a few minutes. And I tried this with the antenna tuner. So I tuned it. I tuned it after it got warmed up a little bit as well. And I tried it off the antenna tuner. In all three cases, after a few minutes, the antenna became unusable at 70 watts after about three to four minutes after cooling down. And I got outside and I went to check it and it was noticeably warmer. So you'll see that here on the screen. All right, so I just want to be completely transparent here. Um, I'm going to go to my menu. You see HF power is equal to 50. Hopefully, if my screen adjusts uh, in 891, that's kind of what sets your HF power. And we are on 3.573. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and start transmitting on FT8. Now, currently the SWR meter is the one that's showing. You'll see it's right above 1. So I'm going to change that over to power so you guys can see the power um, as I'm making these transmissions. All right, so we seem to be doing fine at 50 watts. So let's go ahead and bump it up to, let's do 70. Keep in mind that antenna is rated for 75 watts. And we'll go ahead and tune just in case. All right, so you'll see the SWR is actually a little higher. I'm going to keep this running and just to check and see what the power is actually running at uh, we'll take a look at that this next cycle again this is 50 on 50 off this is like a perfect example of a uh, 50 50 duty cycle so power right at um, it looks like it's actually still only at 50 if you guys don't know what I'm doing I'm tuning for ALC so I'm just increasing my power until my ALC kicks in and then backing off just a little bit I'm going to go back to the SWR and we're going to watch it. So now we're, we're coming in at a good 70 watts. We're not really going anywhere with it because it's 80 meters and 3 p.m. in the day. But just so you guys can see, there's about 70 watts there on the meter. And let's go back to look at our SWR. And I'm just going um, to watch it for a moment and see if it doesn't go anywhere. So it looks like we... Uh... We're starting to get some a uh, little bit of change going on, and that's because the components inside the antenna are heating up. Now, if, if the antenna was rated at this power, then uh, the SWR probably shouldn't really change that much. But let's keep watching and see what happens next. So I'd say we're at like a 1.3-ish SWR on that last transmission. Oh, see, we're creeping up to about a 1.5 there at the end. So if, if it evened out and it stayed below a 3.0 uh, SWR, I would, I would say comfortably that this antenna is rated uh, for it. But we're going to keep watching and, and you guys are going to see that, uh, unfortunately, um, it keeps on climbing. And uh, you'll see it, it gets faster and faster because the antenna is heating up. And I like this antenna, so I don't want to sit here and destroy the antenna. If I kept transmitting at the 70 watts, eventually uh, I would destroy this antenna. It would, it would 
melt. I'm not sure if it's solder point inside the antenna itself. And I hate to even do this on video, but I just want to show you guys because that's part of my honest review, right? Uh, this is the kind of stuff that we also have to talk about if we're, if we're being transparent. And uh, you'll see right here, I'm climbing up to 1.6 SWR. And this is at 70 watts, so it's five below what the antenna is supposed to be rated for. Usually I would think that there would be a like at least like a 10 watt courtesy too, but um, as you can see, we're probably going to climb up probably to 2 SWR, uh, 2.0 this time. And you'll see that my antenna tuner actually kicked in and said it's too high. So what if we take out the antenna tuner, because the antenna tuner is kicking in and it's saying that the SWR is too high, we would have to retune it. So without the antenna tuner, you can see it climbing. We're at 2, we're pushing 2, and we're pretty much going infinite from here on. Now, here the radio is actually kicking in. I'm going to turn on the tuner and we're going to, I'm pushing it really hard, but I'm going to tune at this higher SWR here to see if we can keep pushing this antenna. And I hate to even do this, but it's part of the demo. But as you can see, the antenna is not useful anymore. It's, it's done. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching, and uh, Nelson Antennas, um, I'll be looking for a reply if you maybe have like some input, maybe I have a defective model, maybe uh, you saw something in my configuration that might have caused it, but um, that's it. I just wanted to talk a little bit about the antenna. I am still using it. I, I, that is going to be the antenna that I use throughout the winter. Uh, it's probably going to stay outside most of the time, and it might come with me portable. But I like the antenna. It's a great antenna. It's a great antenna for the price. And it does everything that I want it to do except for a high power on 80 meters. Uh, it'll still go up to 50 watts, which is pretty generous over FT8 uh, or any of these other digital modes. It's really generous, really. Uh, but I just wanted to put that out there after a couple days. I feel bad about putting out the video uh, knowing what I just saw and the issues there that crept up. But anyways, thank you guys so, so much for watching. I appreciate it. And uh, I just want to give a quick shout out to my channel sponsors or my members. That would be Deletion Scheduled Scott Pasternak, unfortunately. Deletion Scheduled. I don't know if that's actually him that did that or YouTube, but thank you for being a member for a very long time. Appreciate you. Um, Emil Vanderwalt, uh, as a general, I appreciate you. Uh, Google must die again. I appreciate you for still being a member. You're a trooper. Van Flickle, you're awesome. And Bart Killam, you guys have been uh, channel members for a pretty long time. All of you. Uh, with the lowest level being um, seven months. So you guys are awesome. Like truly, I appreciate you guys for being channel members. I'm sorry I don't shout out enough. But I would like to say, I do have some stickers I'd like to send out. So. If you're one of these guys, I don't have your emails and you don't have the call sign. If you guys are one of these that are subscribers or, I mean, sorry, channel members, hit me up uh, on my website and go to contact. Hit me up through the email with your address. I'll send you some stickers. Um, and I'm just going to go ahead and say it. Anybody who wants stickers, shoot me an email uh, with your address. I'll send you some stickers. Anyway, 73 to you. Appreciate you guys. And uh, y'all have a good weekend or weekday, whatever it is. 73.